Hi there guys, welcome to another episode. Now in a previous episode, I mentioned that Alice here was going to, on a bit of a mission. Well, she's now been on her mission. What I did with her was I had her through my work uh, and I had her at a trade show. Um, so that meant that I had to drive her. I had to drive her to the trade show, which meant I've been able to put about 50 miles on the clock. Now I can honestly say they were fantastic 50 miles. They were really, really good fun, those 50 miles. Um, she's beautiful to drive. I love the fact that she can run at really low speed and just brum along, same as everybody else. But when you put your foot down, she's got so much power in there uh, and leaves pretty much everything behind. But, as you heard in that clip, the idle is absolutely terrible. Especially when she's cold and you put your foot down, especially on a, like a wide open throttle or even just touch the throttle when she's cold, the engine does tend to die. Uh, now I've been told, put some miles on her, the ECU will start to learn what you've got and she'll be alright. Well, I've put 50 miles on her now and it's not any better. Um, I did change in one of my previous videos the idle control valve and that was before I took her away. It didn't really make any difference. Um, so while I've been at this trade show, I've been doing a bit of Googling, been looking around a little bit, and what I found out is that somebody had said that their car had a similar problem, and it turned out to be the timing. Now, on these engines, you can't set the timing, but what I did read up was that you could get slightly wrong on the cam belt, I think, and I'm hoping that that might be what my problem is. So these engines, have got obviously a double overhead cam so you've got two camshafts here now some cars do have camshafts with a woodruff key that locks the camshaft to the pulleys on here now this car doesn't it's conical on the end of the camshafts which means that all you do is tighten that bolt up and that presses the camshaft pulley onto the camshaft which means that when you set it with the bar at the back these should be loose and you should be able to turn them slightly to get them in the right place. You shouldn't turn the pulley to get it to fit the cam belt. You should fit the cam belt and the pulleys and then tighten these two back up again. Now I haven't done it that way. I have adjusted, I pulled kind of this belt slightly around to get it on and put it on and it's been really, really tight. Um, but I've read up some instructions and that is what might be the problem. So right now, I'm going to pull the rocker cover off. Uh, I'm going to pull out the plugs and the ignition leads. Uh, and I'm going to turn the engine around to just before top dead centre. And I'm going to put the locking tools in, lock the camshafts off, and then I can start taking these apart. Uh, but I'll go through it all step by step. Right, so just like that, I'm into the engine. Now I've turned this, it's not quite at top dead centre. What I need to do now is put this tool in here. Uh, now this is a kit for ZTEC engines. So you get this long pin that locks the crankshaft and you get that bar there that locks the camshafts together. So what I'm going to do first is put this tool in and that goes in as a little plug down the side there near the exhaust and the hole right just there. So I'm going to put this tool in there There you go, and you only need to tighten it up hand tight, it doesn't need to be more than that. And then what we do is turn the engine round till you get a nice satisfying noise. Like that. Once that's done, we can then take this tool and that should then fit in the back there, in both of those. And I can see that this is one of the things I'm, I'm thinking it might be the slight problem. That one has gone in absolutely perfectly. It's absolutely perfectly like that. This one, not so much. So I'd need to turn that to be able to get this bar in here. And that is where these are kind of stopping it slightly. So what I need to do is to probably release these two so that the camshaft can turn slightly and I'll be able to put that tool into it. So with that tool in place, locking the camshafts off, you then loosen 
these ones and you'll need a special tool like this one which has these lugs on the end of it and they fit inside of the pulley there to hold it as you tighten it up or loosen that bolt so you need to loosen that bolt there in the center which is torx 55 so i've just got loosened it slightly like that and you need to make sure that the pulleys are now loose so now the pulleys are loose and independent from the camshafts and i'm now able to take the cam belt off i'm not going to take my cam belt off more than this as i want to put it back on again in the correct position again so then i need to tighten the bolts up now to 68 newton meters so you hook the tool in to the holes in the bar and then you pull backwards on the tool very very gently you don't need to pull a lot and you want to tighten it up to 68 newton meters and then obviously the same on the next one so that's all put back together now let's give it a try So you'll all recognize this engine. It's really lumpy, it's really horrible on idle. Now I was told to check something. So I want you to watch this. Look at that, magic. I'll take that back off again. It's just a clamp on that pipe. Okay, so what is that then? Well, this is the breather pipe that goes all the way down here to the ventilation down there for the engine. So I've posted the question several times on different Facebook groups and Instagram and things like that as to what can I do about my idle? It's terrible. Uh, coming to an island and things like that, I dip the clutch and the car almost dies completely. Um, a lot of people have said it's getting too much air there's an air leak or a vacuum leak and, and I've tried spraying it with start gas all around everywhere and I can't find a leak anywhere. Now the man, the man, Shane Baker, did say to me, what about that valve, is that working? And I said, well, no, obviously not because I've drilled it out and he went, you shouldn't do that. So he told me to do that little test that I've just done there and put a clamp on there and clamp that hose off and it solved the problem. Basically what it's doing, it's just sucking air straight through the engine and the car is getting way too much air into it. So it runs and drives all right, but on idle, it's getting way too much air in and that's why it's behaving so badly. So the bad bit of advice I got was to drill that valve out and I shouldn't do that. So I bought a new valve. So I've got this little valve here. That's all it is. Uh, that va when it's on idle, that valve stops it. And when you put your foot down, that obviously sucks that little valve out there because you can hear it inside there. It's got a little spring in there. So as it gets suction on this pipe, pulls on, it pulls on the piece that's in the bottom of there, allowing the air to come through. But that's obviously when you need the vacuum. When it's on idle, it doesn't need it, and that's when it shuts that valve off. So I'm now going to replace this little valve, and that should solve my problem. Right, well I need to obviously give that a road test. So what I'm gonna do now, go to a bit of a car show. It's one of the last car shows of the season because we're getting pretty late in the year now. Um, but it's in the beautiful, beautiful Gamal Star and a beautiful church outside of it. Um, and it's the last gathering there of the season. So on the last gathering, I'm gonna take the Fiesta for the first show. So I'll put up some pictures and a couple of videos from there now. Um, and then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.